Elk Shape YouTube, Tim here. We are talking to MFJJ today, the archery expert. I am certainly not an archery expert. I'm not even, I don't even hold a candle to Dan. But I try hard, I like shooting my bow. I like shooting my bow and I wanna get better. So today, we're gonna to talk about, my bow got a few upgrades, courtesy of Spokane Valley Archery. And we're gonna talk about those upgrades and why they're important. Guys, Elk Shape YouTube, welcome back to the channel. We are here with MFJJ, the archery guru. And Dan pointed out to me last week that my bow was not silver sharpied. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So we're gonna let the main man talk us through what he does to basically dope the bow. We're ready for the backcountry. We'll start drawing on this thing. I'll go over each thing and why I'm drawing on it to make it a little simpler for you. Number one thing, this bow's tuned and we like where everything is. So you obviously don't want to draw on your bow until you're happy and satisfied with where all your positions are. That being said, it is done. So we're going to go ahead and start by marking where the bottom cable crosses the cam on either side of it. So when you look down at it, you can see an easy line on either side of the cable when you're square with it. So if your cable gives a little bit one way or another, you'll see it, it's real simple. Whatever you do on the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to do on the top. So we're gonna mark that right there. Same thing up there. And then I like to cross, have where my cam crosses my limb on the front side. I'll do the same thing on the cam here. And then look at it. If it rotates at all, you'll see some black that you shouldn't see before. Do the same thing up here. And this is a very similar mark to the other one, but I have seen them vary enough that you can catch one moving before the other one does. So those are typically the marks I would make on my cams. Just for dummies, I'd circle my draw stop. My cam, in case your draw stop falls out, you know which hole you were in. This stuff all comes off with acetone too, so if you decide you're gonna change it later, you can always take your draw stop out, wipe it down with some acetone and put it back on but there is no question which hole you had it in if it falls out. Same thing with your mod. Draw around the edge of your mod. If it rotates like this one does, and it comes out, you know exactly where it was. Pretty simple method here. Come around the tail end here. So if you even rotated that module one position hole, you would see it, it would be obvious which one it was. That's not quite perfect. There we go. Okay, so that's what I would put on the cams for starters. On this bow, because it has an adjustable flex guard, I would draw on the screw all the way down to where it meets the riser in case it rotates for any reason, because that is screwed in. It's something that may go awry. On your arrow rest, I would draw around the base of the rest. Go to the bolt, draw a line on the bolt. If any of that rotates, you're going to see it. It's going to be obvious. We'll draw a line on your rest like that. It matches on that adjustment. We'll draw on here. It matches this adjustment. So if you move it left to right at all, you'll see it. It's pretty obvious. Another one that wouldn't hurt. This rotates here. So if your cord comes loose and your rest isn't coming all the way down, those won't line up when you're at rest before you start to draw it back. It's another thing that you'll notice. Cable stop, your string stop, all the way around it. If it comes out loose or gets pushed in a little bit, you'll see it. Because you'll see black that wasn't there before or your silver will start to disappear. On your stabilizer system, especially a pivoting arm system that are notorious for coming loose. Every place where they go together, mark them the same so you can see it. And if you've got a knob tightened stabilizer here, if you do that, that's how tight you had it. Same thing here to make sure you interpret enough tension on there. That should be pretty good there. So that would tell you where all your stabilizers are. On your limb bolts, you want to mark your limb bolt in relation to the pocket. I usually try to make it about the same width. 
So if your limb bolt moves, which does happen, and it's actually one of the more common things to move, it's good to mark it. Same thing here. Now, I'm gonna go to your quiver bracket. This is also something that can rotate relatively easy. I would draw on either side of where it touches the bracketry. I would touch the Allen screw there and there. So if it ever moves, you can see it on something with a dovetail. You always want to mark on the dovetail where it goes on either side. I know we're drawing all over this, but this is everything that can move. There's a lot of stuff here that can move, so it's important to be aware of it. Um, your leveling adjustments on your site are always really good to draw on because those are something that comes loose and you have no reference of where it was before. So that's always good there. And then uh, your screws on your third. So you'll see them if they're coming loose. draw around those guys. If you ever took it apart or it fell apart, you'd know which holes you were in. And I know it probably seems a little bit like overkill, but anything that can and will go wrong. It's relative. Draw well, and it's like the Sharpie marks are free, right? You know? Yeah. Well, and it's metal. You can take it off. It's not hard to remove it if you change something, but if you don't intend to change anything and you want things to stay the same, it's always good to mark them so you know that they are. I probably wouldn't do any of those just because they're so finite and it'd be hard to tell if it moved. But outside of that, that is everything I would mark on this particular bow. So you can tell at a moment's notice if anything has changed, if a stringer cable has given, if a screw is backed out, if a rest is rotated or moved, you can tell. It just doesn't line up anymore. It's that simple. And that's all you really got to do to be able to take a glance at what you got here and know if something changed. What are the big ones that like amateur me should, should be more cognizant of? Well, the things that are most common is a string and cable stretch. That is really, 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 really common. These marks are huge. Because if a string or cable gives at all, that's where it's going to move, and that's the first place you're going to see it. Oh, other thing I forgot to mention. You want to measure your axle to axle, exact. That so that's 33 and a half. Good. You're going to want to put this somewhere where you're not going to accidentally wipe it off or rub it off. Hear that. So we're going to put 335 is your axle to axle length, so you can measure that. And then on your shallowest point of your grip, it's a 90 degree angle to the back of the string. And it's just over six and a half. So I'm gonna put 6.5 plus. And I'm gonna put that right on the other side of the flag here. Put 6.5 plus. So now you know what your axle to axle end brace height measured at. So if one of those stretched, you should see those numbers change and it's just a standard measuring tape would get you to be able to check that. So between the marks on your cams and being able to measure your axle to axle and brace height, you will know if a string or cable changed, which is the most common thing. Second most common thing is an arrow rest to move because it's all just bolted together and there's a lot of pressure against it and it sees a lot of force. So you've marked where your rest mounts on the riser so you can see that, which you need a set screw in there. You're missing one. We'll find one, we got one back over there. But yeah, you need that in there because that's the other point of reference that holds your rest from rotating. Your screw, if it did manage to start to back out, it lines up with those marks on your rest here so you can see that. If your elevation moved up and down, those two wouldn't line up anymore, you'd see it. It's always gonna go down, it's never gonna go up because it's being pulled down. And your left to right, right here, if it ever moved, you'd be able to see it right here. And then the last one, which on, Fall away rest is relatively important. If those two lines don't line up, the internals are starting to give, or it's there's a screw loose inside that they're separating and this isn't coming all the way down, or this cord has stretched. Those are the most common things, hands down. Average guy is typically not gonna run into anything else, but it always is a plus to mark your site and where your quiver sits, because those can vibrate loose too. But outside of that, that's like everything you need to mark.
So that's the silver Sharpie thing. The other question I wanted to ask, because we get this a lot, is what stuff should an archer bring into the backcountry? Assuming that we don't have a ton of space, but what are the important things? Well, valuables, um, if you're gonna rely on your strings and cables, giving and being able to tell that, you're gonna have to have a measuring tape. I wouldn't worry so much about that on a backcountry trip. That should sit in your truck, along with you know a portable bow press if you have the intention of being able to fix that. That would be more of a common thing for that. So I wouldn't necessarily take a measuring tape. I would, however, take an Allen wrench and an Allen wrench like this, specifically like this. And the reason I would take this is because they're individual wrenches, so no matter where you're trying to attach to in here, doesn't matter the angles it's at, doesn't matter how short the positionings are to get it a screw, this will get to it. A fixed kit may not. So you may have one like here, but you can't get your Allen wrench into. Right? That's what the short's for. So if you're gonna take one, just this. I like to have both, but at the same time, double the amount of weight. Do you really want to carry double the amount of weight because the other one's a little easier to use when you use it. This still does everything that the other one does, but it'll do things the other one doesn't. So it doesn't, the brand's irrelevant. It's just a short, stubby, cut off wrench with a long wrench with an inkling end so you can get it in at an angle and still put some pressure on it. Huge, huge plus. I would hope that everybody that's out there is a lighter or some form of fire with them anyway. Any serving repair or string loop repair that you're gonna need is gonna require a lighter. You probably got one anyway, so it shouldn't be duplication of something you wouldn't need to, just the one you already have is fine. At least a foot of string loop material. Um, if I'm going in with the intention of needing to replace my loop, I'll pre-cut my loop at the length that I like it and melt the ends so I just have a functioning loop to tie on. Nice. But you'll need a pair of needle nose. Now, I'll carry like a Leatherman or a multi-tool and I grind the end of it so I can wedge it in and use it, like something along those lines would be more than adequate. Um, but you're gonna need that in order to put on a loop effectively. You can't get it tight without it, and if you draw it back after the fact, it's gonna be way too long and it's not gonna line up. So if you're not gonna carry like a multi-tool, then a loop's kind of pointless. Um, you don't need a whole spool of serving, but you know, five feet of serving, 10 feet of serving would be valuable to have. You can literally take it around something you already have if you're gonna grab your lighter wrap your serving around it, have like 10 feet on there, put a piece of tape on it. It's, it, it's there for an emergency, it's not there for anything else, but you could make a, an in the field repair in case of emergency without it. Now the other thing you can do that would be very beneficial, it's a bottle of super glue. This has two purposes in your pack. One, any serving that popped loose, you could put glue on it if it was an emergency so it wouldn't keep coming loose. It's not something I really like to do because it will damage your string, but if the difference is making it through the next five days as opposed to I need to completely replace my string, that would be very handy. And if you cut yourself, you can glue yourself shut with super glue. So it serves two major purposes in a backcountry pack sort of scenario. Outside of that, those are the main things I would have because anything beyond that you probably need to go back to your truck for, possibly back to a shop for. So this is the, what I keep as a minimum in my pack. And almost everything has more than one usage, so I'm not having excessive weight for unnecessary reasons. Cool, guys. Well, we appreciate Josh coming on here and dropping knowledge for us. Drop any questions you might have in the comments for future videos. Happy to make more. Just let us know what you want to see.